Section 110 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek, an intensive course, covers the me verb deknumi, and you'll find it in Hansen and Quinn on pages 398 to 401. Deknumi is actually only athematic in the first principal part. So here are the principal parts, deknumi, dekso, edeksa, dedecha, dedegmai, edekthein. And the only principal part that concerns us here is the first one. All the other five principal parts behave exactly as they do in luo. So you already know how to manage those. With deknumi, though, we have a thematic conjugation for all of the forms that come from the first principal part for this verb that means show. Remember, with athematic verbs, the rule is that we have some forms based on the long grade stem, which in this case is dek nu with a long upsilon, and some forms based on the short grade stem, which in this case is dek nu with a short upsilon. So in Greek in the wild, you're really not going to be able to see the difference between deknu and deknu because you won't see an indication of the length of that upsilon. And for all intents and purposes, it means that you don't have to think about it terribly much in the, in the conjugation of deknumi, but I'm going to remind you of that rule as we go along. And remember that you only use the long grade stem of an athematic verb in the singular, in the indicative, and in the active. So in singular, indicative, and active forms that we need from the first principal part, we'll use a long grade stem, and in everything else, we will use the short grade stem. So let me remind you of the endings of the athematic present indicative active, and then let's apply them to deknumi. So we get deknumi, with the long stem, deknus, deknusi, with a new movable. So all of those had our long stem. And then in the plural, short stem, deknumen, deknuta, and deknuasi. Very regular, simply add the athematic endings onto the appropriate stem. The accent is recessive and you heard me pronounce it that way. So of course, deknumi I show, deknus you show, deknusi she shows, deknumen we show, deknuta y'all show, and deknuasi they show. We'll go on to the middle passive of the present indicative. We're still indicative, but we're not active anymore. So all of these will use the short grade form of the stem. And here's a reminder of the athematic middle passive endings for the present indicative. And here's how we apply them. Deknumai, deknusai, deknutai, deknumitha, deknustha, and deknuntai. You heard those recessive accents. And we get deknumai, I am being shown. Deknusai, you are being shown. Deknutai, she is being shown. Deknumitha, we are being shown. Y'all are being shown deknusta, and deknuntai, they are being shown. I don't really have room to give middle meanings here, but of course this could mean I am causing to be shown, you are causing to be shown, she is causing to be shown, we are causing to be shown, y'all are causing to be shown, and they are causing to be shown. When we move on to the imperfect indicative active, we'll be adding the past indicative augment, and now we are active again, and so in the singular of this indicative tense, we will use the long form. And here, again, is a reminder of your athematic endings. We'll use the long grade stem in the singular and the short grade stem in the plural, and we'll get a deknun, a deknus, a deknu, now short grade, a deknumen, a deknuta, and a deknusan. Recessive accent, and here that long upsilon matters, as you heard me pronounce, 
That long upsilon means that the singular is accented on the second to last syllable because the long upsilon means the last syllable is long and so your acute can't go back any farther. And of course this is I was showing a dake noon, you were showing a dake noose, she was showing a dake new, a dake new man we were showing, a dake new ta y'all were showing, and a dake new san they were showing. In the middle passive of the imperfect, we'll only be using the short grade stem because we're not active, and we'll be applying these athematic endings, a dake new main, a dake new sa, a dake new ta, a dake new metha, a dake new sada, and a dake new ta, with that recessive accent that you just heard, I was being shown, you were being shown, she was being shown, we were being shown, y'all were being shown, and they were being shown. Here again, I don't have room to write out the middle meanings, but this could be I was causing to be shown, you were causing to be shown, she was causing to be shown, we were causing to be shown, y'all were causing to be shown, and they were causing to be shown. Let's move on to the subjunctive active. So we're done with the indicative, and that means we're only going to be using the short grade stem. Athematic verbs use the subjunctive endings you've known from the very beginning for every verb, and we simply put them on our athematic short stem. So, dake nuo, dake nuace, dake nuae, dake nuo men, dake nuae ta, dake nuo si, with a new movable possible, and that recessive accent makes it look this way. In the middle passive, same rule, short grade stem, the subjunctive middle passive endings we've had forever, and we get dake nu o mai, dake nu a, dake nu a tai, dake nu o metha, dake nu a and dake nu on tai, with those recessive accents that you heard me pronounce. In the optative, here is one place that dake nu mi is a little bit irregular. It isn't going to follow the rule. It's going to use the short grade stem, but instead of using the athematic optative endings, which all nicely combine with other stems to form diphthongs, that isn't going to happen here. And so we're going to use the optative endings that you learned from the very beginning for thematic verbs. And what we'll get is dek nu oi mi, dek nu ois, dek nu oi, dek nu oi men, dek nu oi ta, and dek nu oi en. So again, those are thematic optative endings on an athematic verb, but I think you will easily recognize them as optative active forms. Again, with a recessive accent. In the present optative middle passive, the same thing's going to happen. We'll use the short grade stem, but we'll ignore the fact that this is athematic and use our thematic optative middle passive endings and get dek nu oi main, dek nu oi a, dek nu oi ta, dek nu oi metha, dek nu oi stha, and dek nu oi ta with that recessive accent. The participle of dek nu mi, the present participle active goes like this, and I'll go ahead and do the whole declension for you. So we'll get dek nus, dek nusa, dek nun, dek nun tos, dek nuses, dek nun tos, dek nun ti, dek nuse, dek nun ti, dek nun ta, dek nusan, dek nun. Notice there that we've got persistent accent based on that masculine nominative singular. Of course, this means showing in the active as a sort of default participle, but you will do with it all the things that you've learned to do with participles over the course of the textbook. In the plural, we'll get dek nun tes, dek nusai, dek nunta, dek nun tone, dek nuson, dek nun tone. Damn dative plural is dek nusi. Dek nusais, dek nusi, with, of course, a new movable possible on the masculine and the neuter. And then in the accusative, 
Dek nuntas, dek nusas, dek nunta. For the present middle passive participle, I'm not going to bother to decline all of the forms. It goes as most middle passive participles do with that suffix menos, mene, menon. And so we get dek numenos, dek numene, dek numenon, where the accent is persistent based on the masculine nominative singular again. And of course, this means being shown in the passive or causing to be shown in the middle. Now we have imperatives. And here we will use that short grade ending and the athematic endings for the imperative active. And what we'll get is dek nu, which is unusual because there all we're actually using is the long grade stem, so it's an exception. Dek nuto, dek nuta, and dek nuntone. This has recessive accent even onto a prefix if there is one. In the second person, of course, it means show as a command. And in the third person, it's a let her or him or it or them show. Again, it's unusual in the second person singular because it uses the long stem by itself as the whole form. But notice, too, that the second person plural is the same as the indicative and that the third person plural is the same as the genitive plural participle active. For the present imperative middle and passive, we'll follow the same rules with the athematic endings on the short grade stem, and we'll get deknuso, deknustho, deknustha, and deknustone. You heard me pronounce those recessive accents. And here, be shown, cause to be shown, let her, him, it, them be shown, or cause to be shown if we're looking at the middle in context. And again, notice that the second pers person plural has the same spelling as the second person plural indicative middle passive. The infinitive, just one form, just one ending, which is nigh, which is the athematic infinitive active ending. It'll be on the short grade stem, dek nunai, with fixed accent on that second to last syllable. It means, of course, to show. And the present infinitive middle passive, again, has the one ending on the short grade stem. So we'll put sthai on deknu and get deknu sthai. And there the accent is always on the third to last syllable, which you could actually think of as recessive. And that, of course, means either to be shown or to cause to be shown. So that takes you through all the forms of the first principle part, the present and imperfect system of the verb deknumi. You don't have to worry about any aorist athematic forms because it's aorist, it's third principle part, and it's sixth principle part are entirely thematic.